Hey everybody, Courtney Smith here with a video about how monkeys beat managers. So in the Financial Times today, it comes a report that active managers failed to beat the market again. So right now, the money management business is really divided into active and passive managers. Active managers are really where you say, well, you know, I really think that stock's going higher, I'll buy. Well, I think it's going lower, I'll sell. That's active management. And that's what most of the money is, active management. But the passive management, that's like the Vanguard 5000, where the uh, index, it could be a mutual fund, could be an ETF, uh, where they basically target a benchmark. And the benchmark is typically the S&P 500, could be the Russell 2000, the Dow 30, the NASDAQ, whatever it is, okay? Could be Brazilian stocks. And they simply buy the stocks that are in the index. So it's an exact mimicking of the index. Now, not exact because there's some little differences like having to pay commissions, whereas an index never has to pay commission. So there are some nuances. There are some small fees, but a lot of the, the index ETFs are very low fees. So most active fund managers in the U.S. failed to beat the market over the past year, according to another dispiriting report on an industry that often claims it will come into its own during periods of volatility. So typically what happens is that in bull markets, the index funds outperform the active managers, but typically in bear markets, you see the active managers outperform the indexes. Well, Given the last year, we had a bear market, but we've also had a bull market, and we're now at all-time highs, essentially. So net-net, the passive managers have beaten the active managers again. So what this means is, is that when you go, if you're just investing, say, in a 401k where you can't really make any decisions, generally, I advise people to put their money into passive investments because they're cheap. Now, that's not the best way to invest, and I'm going to explain why this happens. In 11 out of the 18 categories of domestic equity funds, the majority of funds continue to underperform their benchmarks. So 11 out of 18, which means that 7 did outperform. Overall, 67% of the actively managed U.S. mutual funds that invest in domestic equities were beaten by their benchmarks when their returns are calculated net of fees. So fees are, are a drag on the active managers. 56% of funds focused on, but there were some positive, 56% of funds focused on mid caps and 53% invested in small caps outperformed their benchmarks over one year. So let's take a look. And now let's break this down. So why did small and mid cap outperform their benchmarks, but large cap underperform? And the simple reason is that large cap stocks are highly efficient, highly efficient. Every smart boy in the world and every smart girl in the world are focusing on Apple and Intel and Google and Facebook. But Bob's Bar and Grill in the Russell 2000? Nobody's paying any attention to it at all. So it's far more um, inefficient, which means that it's easier to make money in those stocks. Now, there's another factor. Uh, I was the chief investment officer of a mutual fund company. And I was hired by a company who previously had just outsourced all their money management to uh, other companies. Their performance, mediocre. Basically matched the index, probably did a little worse. So when they hired me to be the chief investment officer, they wanted me to go hire a bunch of portfolio managers and analysts, and we would set up our own portfolio management uh, department. And we would manage the monies instead of outside people. I went to the owner of the company before he hired me, and I said, look, we're a small mutual fund company. If we want to be a medium size, we have to outperform the market. Because if we outperform the market, then all our advertising says, you know, number one mutual fund in this category. And, they, and I said, but recognize that if you go for being number one, most people believe there's a chance you'll be number at the bottom of the list. Are you willing to take the risk? 
And the owner, to his credit, said yes. So I take over. We bring in a bunch of portfolio managers. But we manage the money using a very different style than all these losers have here where they're underperforming the benchmark because they're losers. Let's be honest. And I, I'll go into a long explanation of why they're losers. But the bottom line is, is that what they try to do is outperform the index by only a quarter of a percent. If they can outperform at the end of the year, the S&P 500 by a quarter of a percent, they're in the top 25 percentile of all money managers. And so since their portfolio is almost exactly the same as the S&P, only a little tweak here, a little tweak there, they're called closet indexers. But because they have fees and because they have commissions that they have to pay, then they slightly underperform the index. So they're really doomed to failure. And that's why I say they're losers and they have a strategy which basically means they're always going to be losers. You know, they'll win sometimes, but most of the time they're going to be losers because the strategy is so weak, they just try to mimic the market. Okay, very, very weak. So at the end of the first year, we had, I think by the end of the first year, we had seven or eight mutual funds. I wasn't the manager of all of them. I was the manager of a few of them. And then we had seven other portfolio managers managing the other ones. We had all of them in the top 15% of mutual funds in their category. So our natural resource fund was in the top 15%. Our health and biotech fund, which I managed, was in the top 15%, etc. Because we decided that we were going to use a different style of investing. And by the way, my growth mutual fund was the number one performing growth mutual fund in the country. And, and there's 12,000 growth mutual funds. I was better than all of them. Well, why? Is it because I'm smarter? No. Is it because I'm better educated? Definitely not. I'm, I don't have much of I don't have a college education. So the difference was, is that we were trying to make money. They were trying to be average. We were trying to make money. In addition, what I uh, always teach in my classes is a different style of trading. You see, if I ask you, do you want to beat the market? You're going to say, yes, of course I want to beat the market. Really? So in 2008, when the market was down 50% and you were down 45%, was that a successful year for you? No, that's terrible. That's called relative return investing, where you're trying to beat a benchmark. You're trying to beat the S&P 500 or the natural resource index or whatever it is. That's what virtually all these active managers that are losers, that's what they're doing. They're trying to beat their benchmark. What I do is I trade using a completely different style called absolute return investing. And absolute return investing is where you try to make money every year. Now, doesn't that sound like it makes more sense? But it has a very, very different style. I'm not trying to beat the market. I'm trying to make money. So as a result, in 2008, I didn't lose money. I made money. Okay. One of the reasons why I had uh, an incredible track record as a mutual fund manager was, let me take a, a specific two-year period, 1999 and 2000. So 1999 had the huge, huge dot-com boom. And I ended up doing well. I was in the top 25 percentile. I was up 113% or something like that. But there was a lot of guys much better than I was. So I ended up let's say in the 25th percentile. I wasn't near the top. But when that market then started to collapse in 2000 and the NASDAQ dropped 80%, I shifted out of technology stocks into home building stocks. So the guys that had outperformed me in 1999, who were all in tech stops, then were hammered in 2000 when the NASDAQ dropped by 80%. But I was in home building stocks, which were up 35%. So I was outperforming my competition by 115% in one year. And the two year period made me number one. And I held that title for a long time because how do you catch up to me when I'm 115% ahead of you? Well, it's almost impossible, right? It, it'll take a decade before you could potentially, even if you're really good and did a good job. 
because my style was so different than anybody else's, I just stood out <laughs> like a sore thumb, all right? So absolute return investing is what I teach in my classes. Relative return investing is what nearly everybody does. Mutual fund managers, pension fund managers, and retail investors, maybe like you. All right. That's some insight into how this is going. You should change your style of trading if you're not, if you're underperforming the market like these mutual fund managers are. All right. Hey, if you like this, like it. Click on the, 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 the bell there so you get notifications when we put out another video. Uh, comment down below. Do all those good things, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.